your worship. I said, this is the sing make me your temple make me your dwelling place I would change the song and I would say I am your temple I am your dwelling place they were singing from a place of knowledge I was also singing from a place of knowledge hallelujah praise God because first of all, he makes us his dwelling place to build us up to become his dwelling place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for washing us. Thank you for purging us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, so that you may receive us Let's look at something in the book of Corinthians. Hallelujah. Is this second or first Corinthians? It says, I will receive you. Touch not the unclean thing. I will receive you and you shall be my son's and daughters. Hallelujah. Where is that? Second Corinthians, right? Seven or six? Six is in six. Can we read it? Second Corinthians chapter six. Verse from verse 14. He said, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness and what accord agreement has Christ with Belial or what part has a believer with an unbeliever and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk amongst them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, because God said this, therefore, he says, come out from amongst them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean or the unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want to honor everybody in the house. Uh, thank you so much um, Tokwe for the word you brought. Thank you Pastor Douglas. Yesterday was so beautiful. 
Um, so much was deposited in us yesterday. I left so full, you know, um, just so full of the Lord, so full of the Spirit, so grateful. And I just wish the whole world was around yesterday. I literally felt that way, you know, that people were just around and available to hear these words. Um, those words were so strong and so powerful. And I, I, I am so sure that anyone that drank properly yesterday must have increased in stature. I'm so sure something tangible would have entered into you. Um, if it didn't, if you don't feel the way I feel, please, I want to beg you to just go back, pick one day, because it's almost a whole day's meeting, pick like five hours and just sit down and ask the Lord to bring you back into the meeting. Um, life, physically, you can. You know, um, I'm talking about the experience and the atmosphere. There's a difference between when you watch an online meeting and when you attend physically. Okay? And listen again from all the teachings from my husband started, Pastor Dan Ladi, and then Pastor Douglas, and then Pastor Dan Ladi again, Pastor Chudi, and Francis. Um, it was... It was a measurement. I believe that a measurement was delivered to us yesterday. I believe that very strongly. Hallelujah. <clears throat> All right. I am like Tokwe um, said, I'm in betwixt two directions. <laughs> I have two things in my heart. Why is my husband not here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's, he's, he's online. He's <laughs> okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to honor my husband and thank him for being so very focused on how the direction we should go. Praise God. Hallelujah. A little bit complex sometimes, but trust me, I can break down all those complexities for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Very passionate about where we should be as a church where we should be as the body of Christ. Very passionate about the food that God's people are eating. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, he's a man of God indeed. Very pure-hearted. No guile. Me, I have a bit of guile. He doesn't. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, and I thank God for his life for being an example. Very pure-hearted. Very pure-hearted. Hallelujah. You can point out all the sorcerers to him. He's just looking ahead. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. All right. So I have two directions. I don't know which one. I should go. When Tokwe finished preaching, I felt I should drop my sword because I came with a sword. <laughs> that whole armor of God, right? There's a sword right there, right? <laughs> the sword of the spirit. <laughs> I came with that sword. Praise God. <laughs> to, to declare the vengeance of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the judgment of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Not on flesh and, and bone. Not on flesh and blood. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against powers. Against principalities. Against powers. Praise God. So I have that. And then I also have some things I had written down. I took this sword yesterday at the meeting. Before the meeting, I had, you know, was going in another direction of just teaching the scripture, the theme of the conference. You know, just teaching it, breaking it down, opening it up. 
So as I stand here now, I still don't know which way to go. Can we pray in the spirit? Let's pray. Let the Lord release the utterance. He has a portion for us this morning. We don't want to miss it. We don't want flesh to come in the way. We don't want flesh to come in the way. We want the will of the Lord to be done. We want the will of the Lord to be done. We want the Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the year of the vengeance of the Lord. This is the season. This is the season where the Lord will avenge his enemies in the church. So that the Lord can take his portion. That's the reason why the vengeance of the Lord must be executed. That the Lord will take his portion. The Lord will take his inheritance. That's the reason. Hakumari ketenda kupa shikatala barasata. Maya kando kopo si kende kopo rianda kapata yala baba. Eso patana baya si ke pronde. E luka marie ke posuna baya talesia. E ne kopo si kanaga baya kapashi katala baba sani. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ayo kopo deke bodo kopo bodo kopo bodo kopo bodo kopo bodo kopo bodo. Sheka baba baba shata. Eso kotanda lega Maria gababa shande. Sheka mama mama. Eleke moni gemone. Ese katana gaba. Ese keni gebobo. Ana kapa sandali gaba. A pa 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 pa. A pa 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 pa. Sakatana bashita. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. I will start somewhere. Isaiah 59. The two directions are intertwined. They will marry themselves somewhere as we journey. We trust the Lord. Let's go to Isaiah 59 and we'll see something there. Okay? And I'll just read because of time. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Samson, how much time do I have? When am I supposed to stop? By one o'clock. You are giving me 29 minutes. <laughs> I will report you to my husband, honey. Pastor Samson said, I, I should not mind him, right? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 59. Hi, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because my husband said I shouldn't mind him. Let me start from verse 6. Otherwise, we would have started from verse 9. But let's start from verse 6. Their webs will not become garments, nor will they cover themselves with their works. Okay? So it's talking about the vipers, eggs, and the spiders' webs. Right? He said, their works are works of iniquity. And the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they have not known. And there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. Their justice is far from us. 
nor does righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in blackness. We grope for the wall like the blind. And we grope or grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as at twilight. We as dead men in desolate places. We all grow like bears and mourn sadly like doves. We look for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before us. And our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord. And departing from our God. Speaking oppression and revolt. Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the streets and equity cannot enter. So truth fails and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Then the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him and his own righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. See where our breastplate of righteousness is the Lord's garment. And a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. That's why I say we are in the season of the Lord's recompense. If we are talking about the armor of the Lord, God wears that armor for vengeance. Hallelujah. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, the coastlands he will fully repay. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn from transgression, transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we pray in the Spirit? Just engage the Spirit. Engage the atmosphere. Engage with the Spirit of the Lord. Samani kapahaya kapashatayalaba. Ereprende kose ketene kapaya kupati alaba. Amosa kata yenda kapase tamayata. Asakata kapapasi kambanda. Ereke pronde kapasi katana gabaya. Esi pati kapasa kapata neke posonda. Arakrambo seke pronde kepori alaba. Ese ketene gebobo shi kalababa. Re kapasa katanande. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So when the Lord looks at injustice, looks at the church and sees injustice, looks at us and sees injustice, looks at the, uh, the guy journey from Jerusalem to Jericho 
sees him beaten up by thieves <clears throat> is injustice. The Bible says that his, question, his first question is, why is there not a man? Why is there not an intercessor? Why is there not an intercessor? Where is there not someone that can take up this injustice and come to me for recompense? Praise God. Hallelujah. So this is the call. This is what God is calling us into in this season. To administer the judgment and the recompense of the Lord. Is the honor of saints. Is the honor of saints. It's not angels. Praise God. It's not angels that will do it. Otherwise, when the devil is oppressing someone, angels will just go and cut them off. He doesn't need any human being to say, get out. I rebuke you. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you so much. So God is looking for a man. Say, God is looking for me. Say, God is looking for me. God is looking for me. Hallelujah. For God is looking for me. But I must come to him as a sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. Say that song, I sang it yesterday till almost 2 a.m. Huh? I sang it and sang it. I played it and sang it by myself. After a while, I was tired of the sound. I wanted to hear my own spirit. So I shut it down and I sang it and sang it and sang it. Praise God. So that the Lord can prepare me as a living sacrifice so that we can burn for him. Hallelujah. There's so much in my mouth and in my heart. I don't even know where to start. God knows. Hallelujah. Let, let's go to the book of, let's go to that scripture in Ephesians, the theme of this conference. Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Please link this message from yesterday's meeting. Hallelujah. If you listen to yesterday's meeting, just follow through everything everyone has been saying. Listen to Tokwe's teaching, the carrying of the burden of the Lord. You know, I remember a brother that came in here once and he was fornicating. He was fornicating and he had exceptional gifts. But he was fornicating. And there are some things that when you do it around here, it will, it, it will pick you up. It will, be, it will be exposed, right? So he was exposed. Um, his sister picked up his phone and saw some information on his phone. I don't, I don't want to say what he saw. So I don't expose this person. And she came and showed me what he saw. So I sent for him. I said, come. Till today, nobody knows. This happened uh, five years ago, right? Five or six. Nobody knows about it. So I sent him. I said, come to my house. So he came to my house. I said, so what's going on? What's the issue? And he danced around, danced around. And after a while, we hit on lost. He said, yes, that Shebi has been telling me that that's the issue, lost. So I pulled out his conversation with this girl and um, we took him like a son and said okay no more ministry don't minister anymore because you will minister the wrong incense okay Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump okay we don't want to be infested and not because you intentionally want to do that but if that is happening in your life, it will be easy to start for you to begin to journey amongst us. So I called Pastor Danladi. I handed him over to Pastor Danladi. I said, mentor him, walk with him. Take him into the courts of God. Take him into God's presence. 
and let him be washed and let him be cleaned out there. Praise God. Hallelujah. We met another man some many years ago, even before we started ministry. His life was a wreck. He had been addicted to pornography for 14 years. For, since he was 14 years old. And he is now a fully grown man, almost 50 at the time. Or about 50. And he was doing all sorts of things. His marriage was heading for the rocks. And someone mentioned that myself and my husband could help. That I could help, really. And he called me and said, I hear you can help me with my marriage. I said, yes, you're a man. Because you're a man, I can't help you. I'll take you to my husband. So I took him to my husband. And in two weeks of ministering to him, two weeks of sharing God's word, not condemning him, not talking about his issues or his marriage, we said, put your marriage aside, put your issues aside. Let's look at scripture. Let's see what God's word is saying. In two weeks, pornography broke. Hatred broke. Vengeance broke. Bitterness broke. In two weeks. Praise God. So there's a meal. There's the oil and the wine is real. So, but you can only partake of it when you come for it. Okay, and that's why repeatedly I say in this house, you can be free from anything if you want to be free. But if you want to keep serving Satan, please go ahead. You will bear your own iniquity. Praise God. Because the weakness of believers does not mean the weakness of God. Huh? That a believer is weak. See, my children, I have six of them. There are some of them that can't pray like Francis. There are some of them that can't pray like me. So if you meet them, the ones that can't pray, and say, this one cannot pray like the mother. This one can't pray. It doesn't mean that the mother or the father is weak. Am I correct? So the weakness of God's children does not mean that God is weak. God is not weak. God is just merciful and God is a savior. And the long suffering of God is to bring men to repentance. It doesn't show that God is weak. It doesn't show that Satan is stronger than God. Because Satan knows that he's a created being. He's not a creator. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you listen carefully with your heart in this house, you will be properly fed and every fly around you will leave you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Recently we took in a brother addicted to drugs. Not because he wants to take drugs, but he was suffering from a disease that required strong painkillers. And some of those shots that kill pain are mixed with substances because ordinary paracetamol cannot deal with pain. And after a while, he got addicted to it. Was shooting it into his blood constantly. And it changed his form. It changed his, his image. It changed the way he looks at life. It changed the way he relates with people. Praise God. And then we took him into our home. Say, so come and get healed. Come and get healed. Don't come and get condemned. Come and get healed. Come and know the Lord first. Praise God. I I'm just following up with your teaching. Hallelujah. Removed from him outside the influences. Took his phone, took his iPad, took every contact. The only contact you make is your family. The only physical contact you have is your immediate family and Jesus. And after a few weeks, he's been so free, full of joy, full of the Holy Ghost, full of God's word, loving the Lord, loving his wife and children, and not fallen sick once since then. Free, completely. Hallelujah. So there's power in the word of God. There's power in the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Okay, so finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. In the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise. Say with me, stand against. Say with me, stand against. Say with me again, stand against. All believers' issues, both those that worship idols, right? Hmm? It's wiles. It's because of wiles. Trickery of Satan. Lies of Satan. So all those believers that wake up in the morning and they are waiting for word of knowledge. Right? And they go to houses of idols or go to um, ministers who minister, priests who minister in the altar court. You know, some of us that preach these things, we, we didn't invent these words. It's, these things are in the Bible. Okay, Ezekiel 44 was not written by me. I've been teaching on that Ezekiel 44 now for about two weeks, right? I taught on it last week. I taught on it on Wednesday. I taught on it, I think I mentioned it during open book. I can't remember. During open book, right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I had the opportunity to also teach in another ministry. I also took them to Ezekiel 44. That there are two types of priesthood and one just ministers to the idols of people. And what are the idols of people? The things we want. Praise the Lord. The things we want to eat, the things we want to wear, the things we want to achieve, the positions we want to praise God, or even the ministries we want to build because a ministry your ministry can become an idol. That's a holy idol, but it's an idol. Can be so consumed with what you want to do in the ministry, activities of the ministry, that you cannot pull yourself away from those things and sit in the presence of God alone. That's an idol right there. It's a ministry idol. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because the Lord doesn't, God doesn't want to, us to come, God doesn't want to compete he doesn't want to compete with anything in your life. He doesn't want to compete with your husband. Is that serious? He doesn't want to compete with your child. He said, if any man loves husband more than me, he's not worthy of me. If any man loves wife more than me, he's not. If any man loves his children more than me, he say he's not worthy of me. They tried Abraham, give me your son. Kill it. That tried Abraham. Abraham preferred the Lord to his son. He offered his son as a sacrifice. For, for uh, is it Japheth or Japheth? Japheth, 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 right? I was reading that. Each time I read that portion of the Bible, I wish the Bible could rewrite it. That God said, I see that you love me. Please keep your child. Your only child. She, she didn't have siblings. She was an only child of her father. And the father going to war swore an oath to the Lord. The first thing that will meet me if you give me this battle, I will offer it to you as a sacrifice. And he won the battle and rejoicing he was going home. And the first person he saw was his only child. A girl. Hey! The man's joy turned to sorrow. That moment I'm sure he wished he lost the battle. He said, my child, what have you done to me? This is the vow that I made to the Lord. And the, and the daughter said, you have made this vow to God. We will keep it. Just give me a few months. Let me go to the mountains and celebrate my virginity. And then you can offer me as a sacrifice to the Lord. I was hoping that the day they were going to kill that girl, that the same way Abraham saw a ram caught in a thicket, that the voice of God, not another ram, because one ram has already been slain, but the voice of God will sound from heaven like thunder. And say, Japheth, ought not a girl. But God took that sacrifice. Hmm. 
We need to know God. We need to know God. Hallelujah. You know, some of my children that wrestled with me a bit in the things of God, I used to tell them, I said, any sacrifice that is spotted, Bible says the firstborn, whatever opens the matrix, belongs to God. Yeah? He said, that one that opens the matrix, the day they examine it and see that it is not fit to be offered to the Lord, he said they will wring his neck and kill it. It is not fit to live. If God doesn't take him, then he's not fit to enjoy oxygen. I said, my children, everything that came out of our womb, that's the covenant my husband and I made with God is that they will serve God. If you know you don't like life, you better serve God. It's a serious matter. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's a serious matter. It's a serious matter. Hallelujah. So verse 12 says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against human beings. Praise God. Our fight is not against human beings. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And I know that there are flesh and blood that come to wrestle us. And yet, the wrestle is not against flesh and blood. Praise God. He said, but we wrestle against principalities. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the high places. Now, because of these entities that we are wrestling against... Because of these entities. Now, there are things we must understand what these entities do. The first sentence uh, um, in verse 11, God told, Paul told them, he said, we want you to stand strong against the wiles of the devil, right? And then the next verse, he enumerates for them how, devil, how the devil displays his wiles. What he uses, the entities he's working with, Right? He broke them up in the Akeda. Principalities, powers, hmm? rulers of the darkness of this present age, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. How many people here have read Triumphant Church? Those in Lamb's Wife must have read Triumphant Church. Okay? You've read Triumphant Church. So you see that Jesus appeared to Kenny Hagin and taught him the operations of these demonical forces, the operations of principalities and powers, the operations of the rulers of darkness of this age, and the operations of spiritual hosts of wickedness. Okay. So, of these four or five entities here, principalities, powers, rulers, and wickedness, spiritual wickedness. Can you imagine somebody's name is spiritual wickedness? <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah so of these four entities there are two you can never cast out you must understand their operations you can't bind them you can't cast them out you can't pray them away so whilst our prayers are good and powerful and has its place, praise God. However, there's another edge of the sword that is very critical and very important. Hallelujah. So, first of all, let's look at principalities and powers. These ones you can bind, these ones you can cast out, these ones you can judge their operations. Hallelujah. And they are the ones that are here on the earth. They are the ones that carry Satan. How many of you know that Satan is in the air? He is ruling from the air. Bible calls him the prince 
of the power of the air. And that place where he's ruling from is where we are meant to rule from. He's forcefully occupying our place. And God is waiting for you and I to come and take over our place. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody is saying how? By growing up. By maturity. A sons that rule. Children don't rule. There's no father that will ever give his child to rule. Give his child. The child can inherit a throne by reason of inheritance. But he cannot rule. He must have wise men who are around him. They are the ones that will tell him, go left, go right. Wake up by a you are a king now. Eh? Even though you are eight years old, but you are a king. So you can't sleep till 9 a.m. Kings wake up early by four to make decrees into the heavens. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Satan is there, but and Satan is ruling with two other entities. Types of entities, sets of entities. He's not just one person. They call them rulers. So you see, it's plural. Rulers of the darkness of this age. And then, spiritual hosts. Or, spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Satan's thoughts, Satan's ideologies, the things that Satan wants to do on the earth, the plan that Satan has. Hallelujah which he has been carrying, which he has been, it has been inside of him. As soon as Adam was created, he began to manufacture evil within him. Okay? Satan will release those ideas to the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, who in turn passes it down. Satan has a hierarchy. There's a way he operates. Passes it down to the rulers of the darkness of this age. Who appoints principalities. Principal demons or evil spirits. They are not demons. They are a higher class than demons. Over nations. Over cities. Over regions. Over families. So you would see the, the smell of a principality in a region. And how you see that smell is by the activities of these rulers of darkness who cause these principalities to move into the midst of the people through with powers and enforce powers of darkness over families, over lives over regions praise God and then you see people act in a certain manner they begin to do certain things right in those days before the gospel came to Amolongo, men wake up in the morning and drink ogogoro drink whiskey from morning till night and they get drunk and sleep off on the streets. They are not working. They, are, they don't care about their children. They don't care about their wives. They just get drunk and lie on the streets. Everywhere is a waste place because a certain principality He's speaking into that atmosphere and through his work he has entered into men and cast spells over men making men do things that are evil and that are against God and God is saying is there not an intercessor is there not someone seeing this injustice can a man not be raised in your midst to put an end this injustice Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So he says, therefore, verse 13 says, therefore, take up the whole armor, the complete armor of God. Take up the complete armor of God. Because of time, I can't even break down these things the way I wanted to. But listen to all the other preachers. Everybody is taking a portion of this meal that God has for us. If you listen to everything, you will put it together properly. If you take on the whole armor, the complete armor of God, that complete armor of God will teach you. You will learn to deal with principalities. You will learn to deal with powers. And then you will learn to overcome spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. So, for believers, young believers, I have a lot of young people here listening to me. Okay, a lot of children here listening to me. You must learn how to cast out devils. Okay, Jesus enrolled us in a training school, a beginner course on how to start. In the book of, um, in the book of Mark, chapter 16, he says, These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall what? Cast out devils. So there are devils that make people lie. There are devils that make people steal. Praise God. There are devils that make people do wrong things. Now when you see those things happening around you, take authority over those spirits. Cast them out. When you see them oppress your children. A parent called me from the, out of Nigeria complaining about her son. And some of the things she's seen in her son. Some of the things that she's doing. And this um, someone in Abuja who teaches that children should not be flogged at all at all told her is uh, what you call it? It's trauma. And somebody else said it's a medical matter. And somebody else said this. I said it is neither of the above. It is neither trauma. It is not a flogging matter. It is not a beating matter. It is not a psychological matter. It is not because the child was ill at one point in time. And because of that illness, he's beginning to act in a funny way. At his, I said, it is Satan. It is the devil. And all you need is to put your foot down and say, you this devil. I didn't give you authority over my child. I didn't give you authority to steal my child's self-esteem. I didn't give you authority to mess up my child. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. I said, if you are serious enough about it, you will go. Don't pray about Don't mention it. Don't, don't, let it not be prayer point of mentioning in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for what you are doing in our family. Thank you for my son. Father, I thank you for the deliverance of this boy. I know you are working in him. I thank you for what you are doing. I say it will not go. There is, we must learn the right prayer for the right issue. I say what you need to do is to take up your authority that Jesus has given you in the name of Jesus and as one that has authority over the child and command the freedom of that child, that thing will go. I say in two days, it will go. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there are spirits that you cast out like that. Now there are other spirits that they, what they do is they oversee sicknesses. They spread diseases around. And I think those devils in, in Africa, that, those are the devils that the witches and wizards like most. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Now there are certain sicknesses that when you, you can go to the doctor from today till tomorrow, they will give you the same malaria, they will give somebody Panadol, give you chloroquine, it will not go. Your own will not go. And your own reoccurs at a certain time every month. Or as a certain season. All you need to do is to address that devil. Those are 
demons, evil spirits, causing those things. God wants you to overcome them. God wants you to overcome all of them in their complete strata. He doesn't want you to live with anyone. And Jesus adequately paid the necessary price for all your overcoming. That was why when Francis was preaching yesterday night and he was talking about the offerings for uh, the offerings for for Pentecost, I say make it clear very well so that people do not, you know, how people when you when you look at all this Instagram, when they want somebody, when they want to accuse you falsely, they will take a clip of what you said and not in the full context and throw it out so they can accuse you. So that people will understand that the price for us has already been paid. Jesus has died on the cross for us. For our salvation. For everything that will become. For all the blessings that are already inside of us. Your sacrifice now is to labor to receive them. Labor to bring them out. And that's what he was teaching. That was what he was trying to teach. That some of us need sacrifices to go without food. Sometimes you need to go without food for 21 days. Sometimes you need to go without food for 30 days. Sometimes you need to go without food for 40 days. Sometimes you need to go without food for 3 days and 3 nights drinking only water. Sometimes you need to go without food for 3 days and 3 nights no water at all. And as, as, as you are doing it, you are not spending those that whole 3 days sleeping. Sleeping away the fast. You will not, it, it's not an impactful fast. I have fasted those kind of fasts. So I, a lot of times when I speak, I speak from experience. Both bad experiences and good ones. So I know how we play games, right? Three days fast. You drink water, drink water. They even taught us not to feel hunger. Drink warm water early in the morning. It will give your stomach a false sense of, you know, food. That you are, but God wants incense to burn. He wants a burning. Eh? So he wants you to feel that hunger pang. You think God doesn't know that if you don't eat for 12, uh, 24 hours, you, won't be, you will be hungry. He knows you will be hungry. He ordained, the ordination of God is that we eat morning and evening. Eh? That's how he made, when man fell, that's the system that the man, man's body came into to be sustained. Is that you eat morning and evening. So he knows that by evening, if you don't eat, your tummy will start saying, give me food, give me food. By the next day, if you don't eat, well, I don't come. Right? And God says, stay that way and burn incense before me. Burn spirits before me. That passion, that pleasure you are meant to give to, to food, come and give it to me with tears in the place of prayer. So if you are not praying, it's not effective engagement. It's not active engagement. You have not engaged effectively. And many of us have fasted for years without active engagement. I don't want to fast without active engagement again. I've changed my mind. Because it causes for much fasting and little results. Much fasting and little result. But when I engage actively, active engagement, active engagement, there is no power on this earth that will resist it. There is no power in this earth that will resist it. Praise God. The problem is that when we are fasting, we are fasting doing our own things. We don't even know the meaning of fasting. I want us to start practicing real fasting. Is to give up things. Shut your phone. Close it. Shut activities. Push them forward. Nothing will happen. You know those days when I used to shut down a lot. I will drop my phone with Eka. Or drop my phone with Joy. And when I come down after three days, I will look at the phone. There's no emergency. There's no emergency. So it, which means that I could have actually turned off the phone, thrown it inside my box, locked it up and dumped it somewhere and hear God. Just sit down somewhere and hear God. 
Sit down somewhere and burn. So when there is no energy to pray, you sit on the floor and just massacre Tabaya. And don't shout. You shout away all the energy. That thing you have tried to deal with, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. You bring it before God. All they will bring it to you. Because when you, when you pray long enough and enter the spirit, they change the order of the prayer. They begin to bring you, feed you what they want you to pray. Feed you what they want you to deal with. If you stay there long enough, you will hear instructions. If you stay there long enough, you will see visions. If you stay there long enough, they will give you swords. You will judge some things. If you stay there long enough, you will come into a nature. We want to overcome the wiles of the devil. We want to stand. That's what we want to do. We want to stand. So there are practical things that you can do to train yourself to stand. So train yourself to overcome. A devil is in your family. Cause him commotion. And you are sleeping through the night. Shame on you. As a believer, shame on you. You have been a Christian for how many years? Talk where? That grace has been given to everybody. Hmm? What did Paul say? Paul said, I labored more than all the apostles. That's what Paul said. He said, I labored more than them all. When my husband was talking about walking with our feet and taking territories, that was a fresh revelation. I've never heard that before. I mean, I'm, we do prayer works, right? But it never occurred to me that my everyday going out and coming in can be a priestly sacrifice, a priestly activity. So we've just been wasted, have wasted 30 years of going up and down. Meanwhile, all I would have, if I had this wisdom, every day when I step out, I know I'm taking possession, I'm taking grounds. That's what God told the children of Israel. That's what he told Abraham. came into a particular place some years back yes. where there's hindrances and there are categories of people that are not allowed to enter into that place yes. but as you came into the gate of that, yes. that institution yes. the spirit of God told you to take off your shoes right. and march in yes. so that was a priestly thing right. that captured territories for up to nice still walking hallelujah so, so, you see, we do it here and there. That's how Kenny Hagen taught it, right? We touch these things accidentally. But the priestly life is meant to be our permanent 24 hours a day lifestyle. That's what I'm saying. Thank you so much, honey, for, for that. Meant to be our daily lifestyle. So, you're in, a, in your home. There's a woman that came in here recently. She doesn't come regularly because of funds. Her family is suffering. And right now, as I called her, I'm stead to take an offering for her. I'm stead. So, please, if you want to give, if you want to give to that woman, to that family, lost her job, husband is sick. When she got here, she got here, she met David, accidentally orchestrated by God. And too, too, too long a story. But her husband was dying. Husband was already dying. He couldn't stand up. He was not eating. He was, they were watching him die. And after two meetings, she attended here. She came to talk to me on what to do. I told her, I said, there is no prayer. You know, some believers will have lived carelessly. Instead of growing, let me tell you, 
When you don't grow when you are supposed to grow. When you don't grow when you are supposed to grow. The things that have been written to meet you in the course of your journey. When they meet you, they will swallow you. Because a child, when a child is nine months old, there is something the child ought to be what? Doing. When a child, do you understand what I'm saying? So also your spiritual growth. Paul said for the time when you ought to be teachers, you have need that won't teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Christ. So when you don't grow when you are supposed to grow, when you don't learn some things, when you are supposed to learn them, there are wars, there are battles, wars of the Lord. It's not Satan. They are wars of the Lord. There are battles you must face in life. Sometimes in your family, there are, there's a devil that has been in that family for 400 years. And no Christian has risen in that family unto you. It is in your ordination. To put the reigning of that devil to a stop. Many things like that in our life. So when we don't grow when we're supposed to grow, things will come on us. And then we, we can't. So I told her, I said, she has gone to this prayer. She has met, I can call the names of the biggest men of God in Nigeria. In Lagos, she has met with them. She mentioned it, she said, forget this one. He said, ma, there's nothing there. He said, there's nothing there. This one, he said, there's no, he said, it's all about money. He said, there's nothing there, it's all about money. He said, they like, I don't want to talk what she told me. So, she has gone around, they are helpless. There's no money, there's no power. I said, how will a child of God not have power to deal with this thing? So I thought, how what to do? I said, first of all, when you go to your house today, when you get back into your house today, the first thing I want you to do is speak to the walls in your house. Shout in your house. Tell your house, the power of God is in this house. 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 I said, declare it. Speak it. Let the air hear it. And then begin to speak to your husband. Don't Tell God. Don't ask God anything. It's not God who made him sick. It's Satan. So many times when we are supposed to engage the entity that is causing problem, we are troubling God. God is saying, I'm not the one. I've given you authority to deal with that one. I say, speak the word of God to him. Then speak the blessings over his body. They have been written for him. You people should declare it. In one week, the man began to stand. He couldn't stand. And by the next week, he started walking small, small. Small, small. In about three or four days, his appetite changed. He began to eat. I wish she was here. Anyway, I don't even want her to testify. Not yet. Sometimes we're in a hurry to testify. And we have not also been equipped to battle, to fight, uh, um, whatever, that wants to steal. We have thieves in our midst. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the word of God, we, we, God wants us, rather, that was what I was trying to say. God wants you to have victory all the way. Praise God. Now, you learn with these things. These are the things that raise you up in this dimension of life and show you that God is real and God has power. And God wants you to be raised up to inherit the kingdom of God. Not just to overcome principalities and powers, but to also to overcome the rulers of the darkness of this age. The spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, how do you overcome those ones? By your life. By your character. The reason why you can go to the meeting of a big man of God who is lying and you see miracles, and he's not living right, it's because the operation at that level doesn't really have much to do with the fats and the oil. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Those operations have to do with giftings, the gifts of the Spirit. But God, you see, when Paul, when, 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 when Tokba was talking about when Tokwa was talking about 
Ezekiel, Ezekiel 44, and the priests after the order of Zadok, God said that these priests, they will come near to me. They will come near to me to offer what? Fats and what? Blood. So the only thing God eats is fat and blood. You know they chop offering. He doesn't eat offering. He doesn't eat your money offering. He eats your fat and your blood. What are the fats? The lusts. The idols inside of us. Those idols that they are ministering, the other people, the other group of ministers are ministering to, in this priestly ministry, God wants us to bring those fats and put it on the altar so that fire can burn it. Fire will burn out the altar. Fire will burn out lust. Fire will burn out ambitions, ungodly ambitions. Fire will burn out jealousy. Fire will burn out envy. Fire will burn out lies. Not lies from the tongue. Lies in the heart. Lies that transform into a, a lifestyle. Deceptions. Hypocrisies. Those are facts. God wants them to be burnt upon the altar. When you go to the book of Leviticus, that's how they burn it. That's how the priests treat all fats. They bring them out. The ones covering the liver, the ones by the kidney, all the fat belongs to God. They carry it and they put it on the altar and burn it. The next thing God wants us to offer to him is our blood. So after listening to yesterday's meeting, I knew that God was touching my blood. He's calling for it. He's calling for my blood. Your blood is that sacrifice. That man that God is looking for, is there not a man? Is there not an intercessor in the land? Is there not a cause? Who is it that will bear this thing for me? Who will deliver this region to me? Who will do this for me? Sacrifice. That's our blood. That's our blood. And that's where the training starts. Pray for one hour. Fast, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is the training of burning, of offering our blood. They can train you with it, with your natural needs. After a while, what, okay, so God answers all your natural needs. There was a time in my life, I look at myself naturally, I had no single need. Right now, I see some needs. I was telling my husband yesterday. I said, after he left and came for a meeting yesterday, I went to pray. I spent about 45 minutes or about one hour just worshiping the Lord and talking to the Father directly. And when I finished, I pulled back and I looked at all my prayers and I started laughing. I said, Lord, these are idols, you know, these are all about issues that have to do with me, me, me me, me. I said, isn't this what you call idols? And then I started crying. I said, Father, but you know, I don't have idols. I just need you to solve. Take care of this. Take care of this. Take care of this. Take care of this. And then I remembered Philippians. Uh, it says, be careful for what? For nothing. He said, but in prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God shall garrison your heart and your mind. I say, Father, that's what I have done. I don't want idols. Deliver me from idols. Free me from idols. Praise God. Now, sometimes, in your natural life, there will be the need for you to burn, to offer blood, to make sacrifice, for your child to be free, to make sacrifice, for you to move forward, for you to progress. Some people, Satan is sitting on their heads. They can't move forward. They can't make progress. They can't make progress spiritually. You will teach from today to tomorrow. They are looking at you. Apply it to your daily life. They can't. They cannot apply it to, your day, to their daily lives. Why? Why will you be in the company of where they are speaking truth? And then when they look at your life, your life is like this. What are you doing with what you are hearing? What is happening to your ears? The ears are deaf. They need to be opened. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The 
the reason for the armor of God. Pastor Samson, sit down. The reason for the armor. Don't worry, I'll round up. One thirty. Two minutes. The reason for the armor of God. The reason why God, hear me clearly. The reason why God wants you to wear the armor of God is because he wants you to stop Satan. He wants you to stop him. He wants you to everything they have taught, every love work, brotherly kindness, humility. These are parts of the armor. Without them, you can't stop Satan. Praise God. Hallelujah. Without them, you can't stop Satan. Maybe God is showing you something. When Tobi was preaching, yesterday when, when, when my husband started talking, Pastor Douglas chipped in, false brethren. False brethren. But my husband quoted, he said, it is good for brethren to dwell together in unity. And Pastor Douglas chipped in, not false brethren. Real brethren. I said, yes. We don't want false brethren. I don't want to dwell with false brethren. Huh? The false brethren are not brethren. Praise God. So what do I do with false brethren? I know many of them. I'm telling you, if you walk with God, they will show you. I know many of them. I was telling my husband, I said, I have learned to pray for them. You know the prayer I pray for them? Father, save them. Help them stop their wickedness. Help them escape your sword because your sword is coming. I'm carrying it. I'm carrying the sword of the Lord. Shaka Badaba. Sir? Paul prayed that prayer. He said that pray for me that God will deliver me from unreasonable and wicked men. He said for not all men have faith. Yes. And then he says, it's a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to those who trouble you. So I pray for them. Why am I praying for them? Because I want to escape the wiles of the devil. Right? I pray, Father, save them. Save them in the name of Jesus. Help them. Help them. Drop their wickedness. Drop this iniquity. Drop serving Satan. That's the prayer I pray. God is my witness. However, I also provoke the judgment of the Lord. I call for it. I say, Father, you said you will come near to us with your judgments. So I ask you to come. You said you will come as a witness against sorcerers. You said you will come as a witness against perjurers. You said you will come as a witness against those who defraud wage earners. You said you will come as a witness against those who turn away the stranger. You said you will come as a witness against those who enter your house and they do not fear you. I say, Father, come, bring your witness. Because in dealing with that, you cut off activities of principalities and powers and you free God's people. So that God can take his inheritance. This thing is a double-edged sword. We are drinking. We are drinking life. We are drinking words of righteousness. We are drinking words of cleansing. Instructions that will purify us. But we are carrying the sword. To execute the vengeance of the Lord. Because it is your right. It is your inheritance. If there is wickedness in your home, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I want you to download, go to, go to Google. Google will help you. Or go to any Bible that has a search. Search the judgments of the Lord. Search the recompense of the Lord. Search the vengeance of the Lord. I learned some, some, some practice from Francis yesterday. Pull them out, read them. Pull them out and read them all in context. When you understand the context of each scripture, if there's wickedness in your house, oh, wake up at night. Declare those scriptures. I'm not saying pray for them and die. It's not for them and die. It's not kill anybody. You are calling for God's judgment. You are calling for the recompense. I have a sister whose son was addicted to drugs and couldn't do well in school. Every day they will rusticate him from this school. He will go from this school to that school. Every night he will take drugs, eat, eat, eat food. One day she got up, middle of the night. Every, she found out that that devil functions by 12 midnight. 12 midnight, she will carry her tambourine. 
She will go outside. She will sing. She will sing and worship God for one hour. She will sing around her house for one hour, worshiping the Lord. After that, she will drop her tambourine. She will enter into her room. She will do warfare. She will do warfare. In two weeks, two weeks, the boy is in school right now. Two weeks, no casting out devil. No Satan, get out. No man of God, mighty man of God, do this. Two weeks, the thing left the boy. His eyes cleared. He came and told his mommy, mommy, I have to get it right. By himself. He said, I have to. what happened? They have freed him from that dark cloud. That thing that sits on his head and tells him, oh yeah, go and take drugs. Oh yeah, go and smoke. Oh yeah. It has been dealt with. You can culture the atmosphere and you are trained. Sir, what is it? Leave that one. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Let's deal with spirit. Leave it. Please stand up and pray. Do warfare in your home. Pull out the scriptures. Roll them out. The Bible calls it the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Enough. The church is like this. And the church is like that. This church didn't do this. That church. Pull out the sword of Jehovah. Pull out the judgments of the Lord against the enemies of God. Offer your blood. Go on a fast. Ten days fast for this particular church. They are not getting it right. So I'm offering my blood to God that they will get it right. Harakabasakata. And you open the word of God and you begin to shoot the arrows of God. Shoot the arrows of God into that congregation. Shoot it long enough. I am telling you, two weeks after, you will see change. You can't do it alone. Let us form groups. Two, three. Sister Boluka, you and I, this week, this is the church we are going to face. Next week, you and I, this week, these are the people we are going to face. They are not living right, but they must live right. This church doesn't want to hear truth. Let me tell you, recently, myself and some sisters, we took out a seven-day fast over another ministry, over another man of God that was resisting truth. The seven days had not entered. They called me. They called me. But if it's before, eh, they don't like truth. They don't want truth. Anywhere you go, they are speaking the truth. They are not letting you enter. You have not poured your oil. You have not burnt your fat for them. Pour your fat for them. Pour your oil. The glory of God wants to come to the church. The vengeance of the Lord must be executed by you and I. Harakama Sakata. The pastor of the church that has been captured. How can he know what to do? He has already been captured. How will he know what to do? You see me, you see my husband. Pray for us. Take two, three days of fasting. Pray. Burn your blood.
We judge lukewarmness today, today. Lukewarmness. Lukewarmness. Spiritual laziness. Lukewarmness. Ayakabata kabadagababa. Yarakabata kabadagababa. Waseketeke mbosika bata. Yeah, 
Pastor Douglas will teach us the fat how to burn it. My husband will teach us the fat how to burn it. You have been learning to walk in love since you entered here. Today, we're entering into things we've not done before. We're riding upon the wing of Jehovah God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because God's people must arise. God's people must be built up. You must enter your destiny. You in this commission. You in this place. Except you are the one keeping yourself. We refuse that you will be plundered upon. We refuse that you will be plundered upon. We refuse that spirits will eat up your destiny. We refuse that sorcerers will consume your life. It will not work here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We cut off by the witness of the blood of Jesus. The voice, the fingers, the feet, the power, the operations of every wickedness against the people of God. And we receive the deliverance of the Lord. The angel of God's deliverance. You declare scriptures. You pray in other tongues. Listen to me. Listen to me. What we are doing right here, as important as it is, is not so much of great importance as to what you do in your home. What you do when you live here. That is what I want to equip. That is what I want. What me, I will do. Huh? I'm also learning what I will do when I live here. Hallelujah. You pull out the written judgments. There are written judgments. Pull them out. Pull them out. Don't let anybody tell you that is Old Testament. This is New Testament. Forget it. Forget it. It's the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord in the Old Testament says, I will have mercy on you. I will show mercy. The word of the Lord says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. I will pour water upon dry ground, sir. I will turn your wilderness. The word of God declared that the word of God in that same place says, I will punish the wicked for their wickedness. That's what he said. I'm not saying pray against your enemies. I'm saying declare the judgment of God over circumstances that you meet, over spiritual laziness, spiritual stagnancy. God wants to use you. For God to use you, you have to be equipped. Some of you, your ministration, your ministry is this small. I don't care how much you say those that people don't like truth. Where they are teaching truth, that people don't go. There are people looking for truth. There are many people in these places where you have hundreds of thousands of people that when they are looking for truth, the day they find truth, they will come. Satan has blocked you from them. You can't war. You can't fight for your rich. Jabez says, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And enlarge my cause. Here you come, Ataba. Here you come. Enlarge my cause. Who told you your cause cannot be enlarged? Paul said, all oh, through Ephesus, they share my note. I carry the gospel. I wrestled with the beast of Ephesus. And I destroyed him. And the whole of Asia Minor received the gospel through his priesthood, teaching night and day, praying, fasting. He says in fasting, often, in watches, often, in hunger, often. That is your blood. We need your blood. God needs your blood. Okay, God doesn't need your blood. My blood. Are your petema? Are your pata mama? A pata kababa. So you are not burning. You are not offering your blood. You are only burning the fat. Your blood don't go. You burn only the fat. It's not enough. It's not enough. Your destiny is in contention. Ah yeah 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 yeah. God said I will come because of the contention over Zion. He said I will come with my judgment. This contention over Zion is too much. I'm going to come and end the contention over Zion. What is Zion? It's a house of the Lord. There's only sons that will go to Zion. 
Hey, Yakaba. And the enemy has sat and said, This Zion will not be built. This Zion will not rise. Hey. Oh, Baba. When you bring out your scriptures, you read it out. You worship the Lord. Make sure you worship the Lord well. Worship Him well. Worship Him well. I'm not talking about here. I mean in your closet. Worship Him well. Sing unto Him very well. Sing and worship Him until He appears. You will know when He appears. Your atmosphere will change. Your environment will change. Your belly will change. Your tongue will change. You will know that he has come because he inhabits the presence of his people. When he comes, bring out his judgment. Tell him, Father, these are your judgments. And begin to shoot them as arrows. Shoot them as arrows. Begin to shoot them. Begin to shoot them. Begin to shoot them. Emole kabada kabada kabada. Ebenda kabada 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 kabada. Everyone in this house will be raised as a son. Everyone in this house will stand on that hill of Zion. We will be prepared to enter that hill of Zion. Eye kabose kabata baba. Ebenda kabada 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 kabada. For the controversy of Zion. For the controversy of Zion. The judgment of the Lord must be released. For the controversy of Zion. The vengeance of the Lord must be released. The controversy of Zion must cease. The controversy of Zion must end. Ayakabataba. We release our children to serve God. We release our children to burn for God. We release our children to serve Jesus. We cut off the spirit of drug addiction. We shut down altars, offering children to Satan. Ayakuba, we pull those altars down. We shut down altars, weakening men of God in the place of prayer. There is an altar. Their assignment is the wicked men of God so that they are not able to stand. There are those that don't stand in truth. There are those that don't stand in prayer. Two of them, the same thing. Any such altar against any man of God in this vicinity, in this company, Ayakabata, we come as a church of the living God and we are pulled down. We pull you down. We pull you down. We pull you down. We release the word of the Lord. Awake! 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 Thou that sleepest in Zion, awake! Awake! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place in purity. Take your place in holiness. Take your place at the gates. Take your place. Take your place. David said, I will not give sleep to my eyes. Until God's house is built. God's house is not a physical house. God's house is a spiritual house. I will not sleep until I see the house of God built.
Declare two more minutes. Truly, this my two minutes will not be 30 minutes. It will be two minutes. Declare. I said this house shall be built. Declare it. This house shall be built. Declare it. This house shall be built. I shall be built up. I shall be built up. I shall be built. This house shall be built. I will be fruitful. My course will be enlarged. Yeah, yeah, Kobata. Pray out God's children in prison houses. Pray them to your house. Pray them to your house. This house shall be built. This house shall be built. We release the incense of the Lord in this environment. The incense of the Lord, the feet of the saints, as they come and go, as they come and go, we are announcing territory takeover. We own this place. The aroma of Christ, the aroma of the Holy Ghost is being released in the name of Jesus. From today, we become intentional about it. It's our priestly offering. Hallelujah. Please forgive me. I had to expire what I was carrying. Thank you, my darling husband. You are a man of God. God bless you. I love you. I honor you. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is taking over? You want me to continue? I'll be the borough. I can fight. <laughs>